what's going on guys welcome back to the channel we got some cool stuff going on in this video i first want to say i apologize for the wait in videos it's been about a week and a half close to two weeks I actually just moved into my new house i've been setting up this new studio area um just a lot of working a lot of putting things together to be able to work comfortably and have everything the right way soon i'm going to be talking more on that there's going to be a lot more content coming moving into this place allows me to do a lot more it allows me to improve my content and you're going to see that reflect soon on the video that you're watching and how you're able to consume the info but anyways you clicked on this video for three creative tripod looks effects a lot of what you're gonna see in this video has been shown in a lot of music videos that I talked about um, so we're gonna talk about things you can do in camera we're gonna talk about things you can do with your tripod and then we're also gonna talk about things you can do in After Effects and Adobe Premiere so what you can do in your editing software um, with footage that is shot on a tripod or technically you don't even need a tripod just needs to be on a smooth surface with no movement so let's go ahead and get right into it if you are looking for a tripod for this video or just in general you've been looking to pick one up i'll leave some links below to some affordable ones some nicer ones depending on your budget all right guys so step one of course you're going to want to fasten your camera onto your tripod make sure everything is nice and sturdy you can tighten the knobs to make sure that there's no wiggliness you want to make sure that there's no movement in your shots because that's a big factor into a lot of the effects we're going to show make sure that's fastened on of course like i said if you're low budget if you don't have a tripod you can set it on a ledge you can set it on a box you can stack it on some boxes as long as there's no movement you'll be able to pull off the majority of what we're going to show you so once you have your camera fastened onto your tripod I'm first going to show you how to manipulate some settings you're going to want to make sure that your camera is in manual mode for this this is super essential you should have some basic comfort working in manual with your camera if you don't go look up some basic camera tutorials on how to expose properly or some of the basic information behind what is shutter speed what is your f-stop your aperture what is the ISO over camera because we're going to be changing a few of those to start but in reality you don't need that much info we're just going to be changing one crucial setting for this and that is your shutter speed you can change your shutter speed to do two different creative looks um, by cranking either your shutter speed down or your shutter speed up so normally a good rule of thumb is if you want natural looking motion blur in your shot you have your shutter speed at double what your fps is so if you're shooting at 24 frames per second you'd want to have around 48 50 on your shutter speed and you're going to have a nice realistic looking motion blur now, if you want to have super crazy motion blur, like you've seen in that recent ASAP Ferg floor seats video I speaked on, um, you also see it a lot in Lone Wolf's music videos, a lot of his B-rolls, this crazy kind of blur. That's an actual in-camera effect. There are ways where you can create blur effects in your editing software, but if you want to have that nice, crazy motion blur, you're going to want to change your shutter speed. So there's two things you can do. The first thing you can do is you can change your shutter speed so that you have this crazy motion blur. That's by lowering your shutter speed. So on my Sony a6300, you're going to see me lowering the knob here. And this is pretty much universal for all cameras. It doesn't matter what camera I'm showing here. You can do this with whatever camera you have as well. Just find how to change your shutter speed and lower it so that you start seeing this motion blur whenever you kind of change your camera a bit. Now you may get a little bit scared at first because as you change the shutter speed, it's probably going to get super bright. Now the way to combat that, there's a few things you can do. And this is why I said you guys should know some basics about cameras, some basics about exposing to be able to fix this issue. The first way to be able to fix this is by raising your f-stop, your aperture. You're going to want to change your f-stop. So change the value that I'm showing you here and put it up to maybe f22, f20, f18. It really just depends on the footage, on the lens, on the camera. Everything's going to be different depending on the lighting you have, the time of the day. But change that f-stop until you can actually see things clearly. You may also want to change your ISO. That's the third value that you're going to want to kind of experiment with. But just remember, if you go super high with your ISO, depending on the camera that you have, things will start to get really grainy. Try not to go over 800. All right, so you change your shutter speed. You have everything with this crazy motion blur whenever you kind of move your camera a bit what you can do now is use that handle on your tripod and you can create some really cool effects just by rotating this around so say you're shooting a music video you're shooting some sort of performance scene there's two things you can do you can lock it onto your tripod you can have your shutter speed super low have these crazy motion blur and you can get some really insane effects using that handle that handle is a great tool with your tripod because you can get some interesting looking movement that you wouldn't normally get on a gimbal or or even in handheld you can do that handheld or you can use the little handle on your tripod head to be able to get that cool zoom in zoom out with the lens 
or just a lot of those disoriented looking blurry motion blurred shots. The flip side of that, you can reverse your shutter speed. You can bump it all the way up so that it's a faster shutter speed. Faster shutter speed means you're going to be able to capture nice crisp movement. And basically this is kind of the same as using a higher frames per second where it's a lot more smooth. Um, it's not going to look as natural with the motion blur. Then when you use that handle, you're going to get this really robotic looking movement where things aren't blurry at all. It's very locked on. It's very crisp. All right. So that's the end of tip number one. That's talking about in camera stuff in the tripod. Next, we're going to get into editing software and some cool things you can do with locked in shots in your editing software. I want to mention one little bonus tip before we do segue into that. I just want to mention that I recommend before you mess around with any of your settings on set when you are shooting any kind of video, I recommend that beforehand you experiment with this look because sometimes changing your settings on set is not going to look the same as you may think once you put it into your computer and check out the shots. So experiment beforehand and then a lot of cameras have this preset saving feature. I know my Sony a6300, you can save it into a preset, change the dial on the top and you'll be able to switch between those settings that you saved. Also on any Blackmagic cameras, if you have an Ursa Mini Pro or maybe any of the uh, Mini 6K or the um, Cinema Pocket Camera, you'll be able to save these easy to use presets. I have this 24 frames per second, high shutter speed, blurry preset, which I can click and it'll save. And I know exactly what I'm going to get when I do click and use that preset. So use presets. Even if your camera doesn't allow that, then maybe have a notepad where you can write down the settings that you like. So you're prepared going into the job. All right, guys, now let's get into some of the more crazy looking things using our editing software and our tripod footage to get some really interesting looks. Now, the key to this is you want to set your camera up on your tripod and you want to have a nice wide angle shot. So, so basically you want to either be shooting so you can see a large area in front or you want to shoot with a wide angle lens. I'll leave some options below um, if you are interested in that, but we're going to just have our subject here sitting on the couch. Basically what you want to do is you want to set your camera up on your tripod. You want to set all your settings up. You don't have to have crazy shutter speed. Set it up like normal. Press record. You're going to want to let him perform. Do whatever it is you're doing for. If you're shooting a music video, you can have him perform a full performance scene here. If you're shooting any kind of creative video or B-roll, you can have them just do their thing. Depends on the video you are doing. Once they've done their performance scene, you're going to want to keep the camera rolling. And this is very important. Don't touch the camera. Don't change anything in the shot. The only thing you want to change in the shot is where your subject is. So tell your subject to stand up and go to a different place in frame. So what I did is I told my friend Evan to stand up on the couch and just sit on the other side of the couch. Keeping that continuity, don't mess up anything in the frame in the background. Don't bump the tripod at all or you're going to notice a slight difference when you do this. And what we're talking about setting up is a clone effect. You may have seen a lot of these tutorials on the internet. I know a lot of people have talked about creating a clone effect, but we're going to take it one step further and we're going to talk about creating movement with a locked on tripod clone effect. And that sounds complicated, but it's very, very simple. Once you've done all that, finish the recording and we're going to go ahead and hop into Adobe After Effects to set up the clone. All right, guys, so here we are in Premiere. We're going to set it up here just to show you a little basic version. And then we're going to hop into After Effects to take it a step further. But essentially, you can do this just with an Adobe Premiere or any other basic editing software. So this is exactly what I just explained to you and showed you the little B-roll of. I have this camera locked down here. I have my camera locked down. I told him just to do a little mock performance on one side of the couch. And then I told him with the camera still rolling, just to get up and move to the other side of the couch. So you can literally see him in the shot, just stand up and move to the other side. Now, what we're gonna do to create this clone effect, it's actually pretty simple. We're gonna find the place where he stands up and we're just gonna control K to make a cut. Now we're gonna move to where he switches sides and then we're gonna control K to make another cut. So we can delete this little excess where he stands up. We don't want that. Take these two clips you're going to want to grab the first part here and just move this into a video layer above. So now if we hide this layer, this is what we have. I click here. There's a he's on the right side. I click here and he's on the left side. And this is why we do this with a tripod. There's no movement like this is why I said we want to keep the continuity the same as as well as possible. Of course, since he's sitting here, it's going to sink a little bit. But what we can do, we can create this clone effect super easily just by doing a little mask. So we want to bring this section of this bottom clip and show it together with this section over here on our top clip. To do that, select your top clip. Go over here to your effect controls on the top left. You're going to want to find the opacity section here. You may need to expand it. And then you can just grab your little pen tool to create a mask. 
and now we can just mask out the area where he's going to be so mask out him so mask his section out here a lot of you may have already seen this we're going to take it a section further so once you masked it there's your clone effect right there since there's no movement it looks exact it looks like there's two people in our frame and you've seen this done a lot this is done in music videos um this is done on instagram i know kid boo tried to trick people talk about how he's a clone using this exact trick where he kind of has a conversation with himself this is how you do it now the way i'm going to show you where you can take it further is using some transformation effects first let's show you in adobe premiere then we'll show you in after effects to bring in some more kind of complex to bring in some more complexity to it so essentially what you can do is you can go to your effects and presets here in adobe premiere depends on your workspace if it's if you are in the effects tab it might be on the right um, if you're in color tab i like having mine in the bottom left here find your effects library and search for the transform effects. Scroll down here, you'll see it's under distort, is let's actually press C on our keyboard first. We wanna bring up our little cut tool. Let's cut these together, and so that these aren't two clips, we want these to be one clip. Select them both, right click, nest. Nesting is just pre-composing this, so now those two clips are now one clip. This is all both the same. Also, apologize for the lighting. Everything looks really bland. It looks like he's kind of in like a nursery school prison or something like that, but lighting was bad. Everything was getting dark outside, so we just quickly set it all up in the new studio. I'm going to have a tour video on that soon, but anyways, once you've nested your clip, grab your transform effect and place that onto your nested clip. Now, with this nested sequence selected in our effect controls in the top left here, we can scroll down and find this transform effect expand that so you can see it now we have a few options here we have our position we have our scale we also have the shutter angle which is pretty cool what you can do here is just starting at your beginning position you can keyframe your anchor point keyframe your position keyframe your scale anything that you want to change here and now we can just do a lot of zooming in and add motion into this more static shot so let's kind of scale in here and just change these values to move however you would like. So let's maybe do a zoom here. And you'll see since I made those keyframes, once I change things, once I move along, now we have a little zoom going on. So that's how you can create that kind of more natural looking clone effect. Clone, 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 but nothing's moving except for the clones in the shot. If you add these little transform effects and these zooms, it makes it just seem a little bit more... Um, it makes it just seem a little bit better in my opinion and we can just go ahead and move and keep adding on to this as you see here it is if you want to make this faster select the keyframes and just drag them in and now you'll see this will kind of rotate a little bit faster over so you can create cool little seamless transitions like that and kind of make it more like a conversation instead of just looking into a room of clones um, so one more time we're going to break that down slowly for those of you that are beginners that may not know what i'm talking about so let's go ahead and just delete all the transform we'll delete the transform we'll start from scratch so you look up your transform effect drop that onto your clip now starting at the beginning of where you want the movement to happen you go into your effect controls here keyframe your anchor point your position your scale anything that you want to change if you want to zoom in if you want to move to the left keyframe those values at your beginning point next step move to where you want something to happen so grab your timeline scroll a few seconds maybe right there where he points we want it to zoom in on him so he points take your scale bump that up and then you can even just click this little box here and just move the screen to where it want you want it to be like this now since we did that we created these keyframes check that out so now it's going to zoom in on him doing that as soon as he does that we want to click 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 make a keyframe this is going to be our starting position two and we're going to zoom over just by changing these values to clone number two. Like I said, if you want that to be faster, you grab your keyframes and you drag in. There you go. So that's how you can create this cool, interesting looking motion. So now it goes back over to clone number two and maybe zooms back out a bit, something like that. So now it just adds a lot more fluidity and that's what I was trying to talk about by adding that spin onto your clone effects. Now, another thing that you can add onto this, and this is the last tip before we move into effect number three, which talks all about motion using this clone effect, is going to be adding a little bit of shutter angle. Now, if you wanna do like a crisp, um, really nice smooth zoom and I made a full video talking about this It's used in a lot of Tarantino videos where you have this zoom and there's a lot of blur and then it locks on The way to do that within Premiere and then we'll show you in After Effects We have everything keyframed at our starting position Move in right when he points there 
let's do a nice dramatic zoom and then let's kind of put this over by him you can also change your values just to do that so let's see what we got so nice kind of zoom let's make that faster drag your keyframes in like that now instead of our keyframes kind of swinging in you can select all these and this is just a little bonus temporal interpolation you can change these to maybe ease in auto bezier this will kind of just smooth out the animation so now it kind of like swings in a little more smooth what you can also do select your clip go down here just scroll down and find shutter angle you can bump this up to something like 180 and if you have a lot of dramatic movement a lot of dramatic zooming this is just going to add blur remember we talked about changing your shutter making your shutter really crazy now you'll see once we do the zoom there's going to be a lot more blurring as if it's natural camera movement and if you want to see more of that dramatic blur um, what you can do is crank this up more and you can see now you see how this is blurry here from cranking that up look this is zero this is 360 so 360 shutter zero shutter that's how you can create some cool looking zooming in after effects um, that's mixing together the previous video i made about these tarantino crash zooms using clone effects using tripod effects let me show you the that exact same thing in after effects let's even just start from scratch to make it easier for you guys so we're going to go into the nested sequence grab the original footage and i'll just paste it over here so we have our two stacked up clips if i hide this you'll see this is our bottom shot this is our top shot i'll even delete the mask here so we're completely starting from scratch and we'll do this faster since i already explained the basics but select both of these right click replace with after effects composition to bring them from adobe premiere to after effects with a dynamic link so anything you do in after effects it'll show in premiere you can also just open it in after effects if you guys only use after effects okay guys so we're in after effects like i said you can use that dynamic link or just file open and then bring in your two little shots here we're gonna do the, we're going to do the same thing i just showed you in after effects it's basically the same thing as premiere so we have our top shot if i hide it you'll see we you'll see we have our bottom shot. So if you're changing your visibility, this is what it looks like. If you did it correctly with your tripod, step one, we make our mask. Select your top clip, grab your pen tool or click G and just split this down the middle like that. Easy as that, you don't have to feather anything. We now have our clone effect, very easy. Now you can use the transform effect like I showed you within um, Adobe Premiere or you can use After Effects cameras since you're in After Effects and I do like using AE cameras a lot of people always say use the transform effect I just think you have a lot more tweaking with the cameras but that's all just personal opinion they're basically the same so step two select both your clips hold down shift and click both of them so they're both highlighted right click them and pre-compose them this is literally the same thing as nesting just After Effects word for nesting so in this pre-comp we're going to just name this clones click OK so now we have our two little clones here we can right click in this gray space and then go to new and then go to camera and then we'll click OK now this is where I like cameras you can set everything up as if it's matching your actual camera or a real in or a real in life camera so you can change your preset to be maybe wide angle or 50 millimeter or maybe a telescopic or maybe a super zoom lens you have a lot more control with this so we'll click OK now what it's saying here is camera lights do not apply to 2d layers so basically it means for the camera to do anything you need to make this a 3d layer super easy you just click toggle switches and modes down here until you see this little 3d cube and, the, and then just enable that switch now this is a 3d layer basically now we can use our camera with this if this isn't a 3d layer here and we try and actually move our camera you'll see it's literally not going to do anything but if this is a 3D camera, or but if this is a 3D layer down here, check that. Now you'll see if we move our camera, it's going to move the footage because this is a 3D layer. So the same exact thing, start at your beginning position, keyframe all that, move to where you want. And then another reason why I like using the camera instead of transform, you can just click the C key and you can actually click it again, cycle through these different tools. This is move left, right. Um, up and down this is move in and out and you can use the tools to basically kind of um, and you can use these tools to basically precisely choose where you want it to go so now we have a nice zoom in there this is better because like I said if you want to have more control of where this camera is zooming in camera a camera is a lot better it's a lot more precise um, but if you just want blur uh, you don't actually have to do that in your camera what you can do is click toggle switches and modes again and you'll see these three little dots this is your motion blur 
enable that something a lot of people forget they think that if you just check this you'll get your motion blur that's not the case you also have to enable it in the composition so click the three to click the three dots here so that's blue check it here if you're not seeing that click toggle switches and modes now to actually see the shutter angle a lot better once we do our zoom what we want is we want to go to composition composition settings advanced and then here's your shutter angle so if you want more shutter blur take that bump that up maybe 360 uh, whatever you want if you want to really see the blurring happening take this make it faster and now you'll see see all the blurring that we have going on here that's from our shutter angle if you want to see the difference composition composition settings let me show you we'll put that down you'll see now it's less blur we'll put that up now it's more blur great so we'll put that back to normal we'll put it at 360 and this is the exact i made a full video on this i talked about creating crash zooms this is done in a lot of tarantino films where you have this crazy kind of blurred zoom and it locks on on their face you can do this with your clones to kind of create this more crisp um, interesting looking creative movement if you guys don't want it to look as robotic if you want it to maybe even look handheld you can go back into premiere since we use that dynamic link everything we just did is now in premiere you can even add in a little handheld preset just look up handheld i know this um Jarl's deadpool handheld presets these are free i'll leave a link down below to that so you can drop that on here and then you'll see this is kind of a black edge so we'll just scale it up a bit so now what we have is clones with that tarantino-esque crash zoom or just kind of more interesting shutter blur movements with handheld so that's how you can just add a lot more kind of life into these interesting vfx shots and it doesn't just have to be a clone i just want to show you the kind of structure the fundamentals for why people use tripods a lot for vfx shots when you need something that needs that continuity where it has to be a still shot using that tripod can open the door to a lot of different vfx shots a lot of different opportunities than if you had um handheld movement where you need to track everything if you have a tripod, you don't really need to track that off. There's a lot less complexity into it, and you can pull off a lot of cool stuff like this. All right, guys, so on to our third tip, our third trick. Now, this one is going to be showing you some new stuff, but it's still going to have the same kind of fundamentals. And then at the very end of this tip, we're going to show you how you can bring together every single thing that we talked about through this, all the different tips and tricks, and combine them into different things, experiment, et cetera, et cetera. So starting off, uh, we have the same exact thing. We, we have the same exact thing here. I shot it the same exact way. We're gonna go ahead and combine these. That looks great. Next, we need to make our mask like we did in the last step. So go ahead and select your top clip, go up to your effect controls, and then go ahead and just grab your opacity mask and just draw a mask around your subject here. Perfect. And you'll see, you don't wanna mess your mask up. So if you need to make any adjustments, just select the clip again, find your opacity, click on the mask here, which is mask one, and then go ahead and just adjust. All right, so now we have our two clones performing in here, just like we showed you the last time. You can go ahead and you can use the camera trick or the transform trick if you wanna add more motion to this. I recommend you do that at the end because what I'm gonna show you now is how we can mess around with different speeds to create some more interesting looks. So, so this is something that I've seen in a few music videos. Everyone was moving around. There was kind of like a time lapse um, where he was the only one who was in normal space and everything was just kind of chaotic moving around him um, sped up. This is exactly how we can do that. Using this mask, using these clone effects using that tripod so the only difference with this shot in particular is I shot this at 120 frames per second so if your camera shoots 60 frames per second um, that'll be fine in terms of slow motion you want to shoot at 60 frames per second or above what you can do is actually right click on your clip go to speed duration and you can make this 50 speed and it's gonna be nice crisp and slow motion so you'll see if I zoom in here slow motion on the left and then normal on the right. You may notice some flickering here. The reason why there's flickering is I actually have some LED lights that are on my desk. My desk is actually right here out of frame, obviously, but that's why you wanna keep everything, the continuity as clean as possible. If there's something in there that's going to mess up or differ from the two shots, then you're gonna notice that there is some change. Now, there's a little bit of different lighting here. We can fix that just by clicking on here, going to our mask, so expand this, and then let's go ahead and just maybe bump that feather a tiny bit and you'll just see that disappear there. So this is with the feather. And if I bump the feather down, you'll see here's that hard edge. So if you're having any kind of little difference, maybe it's just a small lighting thing, you could adjust the feather to fix that easily. So now we have this in slow motion. So now we have this side in slow motion, this side in normal motion. I'm gonna go ahead and reverse that. I'll set this into normal motion. 
put that feather up. I'm gonna make this one the slow motion because this is a smaller clip anyways. This is a shorter length clip. So this is now in slow motion. This is normal speed. Let's go ahead and add a fast forward motion to this top clip. So right click, speed duration. Let's make this 300% for the speed. Now watch this. So you have one side super fast, one side that is slow motion. And of course you can go back and you can use the tricks I showed you where you can zoom in, you can use the AE camera, you can do every single thing I'm showing you here in Adobe Premiere and After Effects. Another cool thing, if you're planning on doing that time lapse, like in the ASAP Ferg floor seats video, you can set it up as a time lapse, or if you just want a quick little um, kind of motion blur effect, you guys can look up a trails effect in my effects pack version one. We actually have this Max Novak ghosting effect. So link to that will be down below if you're interested in picking up any presets. You'll see that this is kind of brightening it up and kind of more ghosty. Um, what I can do is I can just put it on blend or if you have any other third party trail plugins, go ahead and apply that. There's some different presets, different plugins out there on the internet. So you can really get creative with this. You can create some really interesting looks where there's a lot of crazy stuff happening on one side but there's a lot of crazy stuff happening on one side. Maybe if you have a lot of extras, there's a lot of motion happening. Um, you can use that to really isolate your subject with the slow motion, but have all this craziness happening on the other side or surrounding them in the background, whatever you wanna do. Anyways guys, I hope you did enjoy this tutorial. Leave a like, comment, subscribe if you did enjoy. Let me know in the comment section below what you'd like to see next from me. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting and I'll see you guys in the next one.